Hey, this is Greg. Welcome to the channel. And I wanted to just do this quick update on what is going on in the market, specifically with respect to Fed policy. All right. Well, Biden had a meeting with Fed Chairman Powell yesterday at the White House, along with the Treasury Secretary. Uh, and uh, it was quite interesting because <laughs> It seems to me what he's attempting to do now is change the narrative and basically blame the Fed for all the woes related to inflation and the economy and uh, gas prices, everything that's going wrong. He's trying to pin it on the Fed. Uh, this is putting further pressure on the Fed, which as we've talked about many times, uh, is completely behind the curve with respect to uh, inflation. Uh, they stayed in the game of money printing and easy uh, money policies for way too long after it was already evident that the economy was expanding and uh, the, the fiscal spending was continuing to be out of control uh, with the 1.9 trillion that Biden flushed into the economy uh, as soon as he took office. Uh, all of these things combined uh, created an enormous supply a demand imbalance, and you have the incredible inflation situation that you have now, and you have the Fed sitting there completely behind the curve. And my opinion, and the opinion of many others right now, is that it will be literally impossible for the Fed to create a soft landing, and we're going to have a recession either uh, at the end of 2022 or the beginning of 2023. Okay, that's my view. But there's one aspect of this that I wanted you to focus on as an investor. And this is a situation that most people alive have never seen. And I have to tell you, in the many years I've been uh, involved in stocks and Wall Street and you know, following investing and, and uh, as an investor, my life as an investor, I have really never seen this overall setup, uh, given the macro situation, uh, the Fed policy, and all, uh, I have never seen a worse setup for stocks in the history of my <laughs> looking at the stock market, following and investing. Okay, but there's one thing in particular that I want you to focus on. Okay, we have all grown up in the last 10 to 20 years in a environment where the Fed to a greater or lesser extent, was basically printing money and involved in, again, to a greater or lesser extent, basically manipulating uh, the interest rate environment vis-a-vis -vis printing money and buying securities, right? This is called quantitative easing, right? And over the last 10 to 12 years since the financial crisis, the Fed has been doing this to a greater or lesser extent, okay? And what I want to point out to you today is we have now gone from a period of quantitative easing, right, where the Fed's printing money and buying securities and ballooning up its balance sheet to this huge, enormous number after COVID of basically $9 trillion. They have embarked on two things. Number one, they've stopped printing $120 billion a month and buying securities. So now you're going to start to get true price discovery in the fixed income market, which we haven't seen literally since the, finan uh, the financial crisis of 0809. Second thing is they're starting to uh, decrease the balance sheet. They're not doing it aggressively, admittedly, but as securities mature that they are holding, they're going to just let them burn off. And therefore, uh, since they're not buying new securities, the balance sheet is over time going to decrease. Okay. This is already starting to show in M2. Uh, for the first time in many, many years, uh, there was last month a slight decrease in M2. That's money in circulation. This is going to have a very profound effect on the economy, on people's pocketbooks, and most importantly for us, the, uh, it's going to have a profound effect on the financial markets 
specifically the stock market. Okay, again, I watch the financial news, CNBC, Fox Business, Bloomberg, whatever you're watching. I read the Wall Street Journal. You're still seeing people talk about um, getting into the market, buying stocks that they think are cheap, and, uh, and basically, I think people are still in denial on the situation that we find ourselves in right now. While I think for long-term investors, uh, you can still be a stock picker if you're willing to look at short-term losses um, and look three to five years out, I would argue that very few people have the temperament for that. Um, even many professional investors, since a lot of their uh, uh, track record is viewed in the short term, a lot of you know a lot of people talk a good game when it comes to looking out three to five years. But when you're staring at a short-term loss, it makes makes the whole thing very difficult. Um, I think you're going to see uh, bear market rallies in the short term, perhaps significant bear market rallies, at times maybe violent bear market rallies, but uh, these rallies are going to ultimately result in more sell-offs. And I hear a lot of people talk about uh, a, a S&P target of uh, 3,800. You know, I think that is definitely a downside target. But what I look at more than that is I look at the VIX. And I said on the last video, and I still believe this, that you're going to have to see uh, a, a, a violent spike in the VIX uh, into the 40s, maybe even into the 50s, before you see all these optimistic people and these buy-the-dip people, because uh, this buy-the-dip mentality is still very strongly entrenched because, as I said, <laughs> most people alive... Uh, most investors have never seen a situation like this, and uh, with you know the Fed put was always there. Fed put's not there anymore. Okay, now that's not to say that Powell, because I think Powell is a horrible Fed chairman. Uh, that's not to say that if the market really goes into a violent downward spiral, that he's not going to step in and provide liquidity. Um, he he could very well do that. Um, so at that point, buy the dip might be a good idea, but that's not going to happen until the VIX, uh, goes into the 40 to 50, uh, range and causes, uh, massive comp capitulation over all these bulls that are still hanging around out there. All right. So I hope this was helpful. Remember, we've never seen, we've never been in a quantitative tightening situation uh, as long as I can remember, quantitative tightening along with interest rates going up does not in any way suggest any kind of a bull market. And remember, don't fight the Fed. That's one of the most important things I can impart to you as an investor. Okay, so thank you for watching. The purpose of this channel is to uh, talk about specific investments, the macro environment, and uh, give you some ideas, give you different ways of looking at the market with the sole purpose of making you a better and richer investor. Okay, thanks for watching. I, if you find this value, I hope you subscribe and like, and I'll see you on the next video.